you lose your arm and it's like, oh, well, this me, life sucks. Six years later, here I am, hopefully about to develop some of the best technology for people out there. Evolution hasn't stopped just because we are here. We probably are becoming the first species that is capable to influence its own evolution. I could have this hand look any way I want. What if I don't want a hand? What if I want a tentacle? Modern advances in the world of prosthetics are changing lives across the globe. Where once there was stigma, amputees are now empowered and enhanced. From low-cost 3D printed designs to high-tech innovations, I wanted to see how access to these technologies has changed, what further developments are around the corner, and what ethical battles lie ahead. This is bionic actor Angel Jufria. Angel is a congenital amputee. Look at their little faces. Born without her left hand. Is it safer to do it with your other arm? Yeah, it's really safe. We met up at her home on Louisiana's Pearl River. My mom was put on bed rest a few weeks before I was born. Had no idea that I was going to have one arm. She happened to see a program on TV, no joke, about the first ever myoelectrics for children being brought into the United States. She cried the whole thing, right, because she's pregnant. These babies, they're giving them arms, that's so great, right? And then two weeks later, she has a baby missing her hand. My mom was like, oh great, I know where I can get her one. And everyone thought she had lost it, right? They were like, she's like these tiny little robot hands, I've seen them for babies. Angel is the youngest baby in the world to receive a myoelectric arm. Surprisingly, many doctors are still in the dark about today's prosthetics technology. They just, with ultrasound, thought her arm was in a shadow. So we didn't know till right then. They were telling me that I would have to put a, a harness on our little girl that was controlled by a pulley that opened a, a hook. Prosthetics technology has gone from hooks, like this, to hands with limited motion, like this. In the future, they will look and move like this. And I'm gonna tell you, this thing is kind of heavy. Let's see. First day of school, we'd stand up in front of the class, just from when I was five years old, and then I would talk about my arm. I would take it off and I would show it to them, and I thought it was so cool. I never thought there was an issue with my arm. And then I met kids, and I met other adults, and I started to realize that everyone doesn't think this is as cool as I do. You know, I had kids that were afraid of me. I had a kid that cried when I took off my arm. What kind of a toll do you think that took on you? I have one hand. A big thing with this one was I was tired of telling people that I had one hand. We're having a conversation, say we just met. I, the whole time in my head I'd be going, did they notice yet? Did they notice yet? Did they notice yet? And I'd be like, oh, they noticed. Okay, I should probably bring it up. Like, you'd see them do this and be like, okay, something's wrong with their hand, right? This was the first of the multi-articulating hands. It had a glove over it, and I didn't like it, so I took it off. Look how big it is. It's this heavy was, as well. Yeah, right? this was the first hand that came out. Oh. With an arm like this, I'd imagine it's a lot more empowering. This is now mine. I designed this. This looks the way I want it to look. So I think it helps a lot with wanting to wear the device, wanting to learn to use the device. This is out there, and this is okay. And I think that does get rid of a lot of the stigma that's attached to it, because stigma implies it's something you should be embarrassed about, and we're not. A cutting-edge bionic arm like Angel's can cost upwards of 20,000 pounds. But even people without access to such funds have options, thanks to the revolution in 3D printing. I paid a visit to Callum and Jamie Miller at their home in County Durham. This arm is all 3D printed, most of it in plastic, except from the part where it connects to all of the fingers, which helps me move it. All of these, they can't move unless you pull it there. So when I do that, it makes me clench my fist. After finding out that the waiting list for a printed prosthetic arm was 18 months long, Callum struck upon an idea. Some advert just popped up on my Facebook page for a 3D printer. 3D technology, I've never dealt with it, never done anything with it at all. It is mesmerising, you just sit there watching it, doing something, gazing at it, just printing something from nothing at the end of the day. How long do you find yourself wearing it? If I'm comfortable, like, for the first hour, then I'm probably comfortable for the next five hours. It really 
fit. It makes me feel emotional when I watch him doing stuff for the first time. Oh my god. <laughs> Creating your own prosthetic arms at home means an inevitable fusion of the ordinary with the extraordinary. This is what? three months since you got the printer. So what's next? We've looked at the Mayo electronics which work on muscle movements. Those sensors then go to turn the motor to open and close, which means he's not having to bend anymore. Do you think it's brought you closer together? I don't think we're any closer now than we were before Christmas, are we? Not really. We talk to each other a lot more. Do we? <laughs> In McDonough, Georgia, I caught up with musician Jason Barnes. Hi Jason. Hey, how's it going? Good, thank you. We, we listened for the drums and just kept coming. Oh yeah. <laughs> Unlike Angel and Jamie, Jason is an acquired amputee, having lost his hand in an accident at work. Wrong place, wrong time scenario. Uh, transformer overloaded and arced a bolt of electricity into my back. When it happened, I was standing in a puddle of water with rubber uh, boots on. So the electricity, I wasn't grounded, so it couldn't pass through me. And so that's what it did the damage. It went in my left side and then exited through the right side of my body. And then I woke up in the hospital and I had no idea what happened. I was just remember burnt, being burnt and the explosion sound. So I was like, did something like blow up or like, you know, something happened, you know? And they were like, no, you got electrocuted. Um, yeah, I was just, what? <laughs> I had no idea. Jason doesn't remember anything. We didn't even know what hospital he was in. I didn't even know where he was working that day. And he was just totally burnt, you know? His eye, eyelashes and eyebrows were singed off. The doctor said, okay, we're going to take him off to surgery. And I said, surgery, why? And they said, well, because we have to splay his arm open. It was horrible, we, we talked and, you know, when we made the decision to amputate his arm, he just kind of broke down in my arms and said, mom, I'm never gonna play the drums again. And, my life's over, you know, that's what he thought. I was uh, depressed beyond uh, <laughs> the normal person at that point in time. I finally was like here recovering and I just got so bored one day is when I drugged the drum kit out. I was like, you know, I'm gonna tape the, the drumstick to my arm and then started playing and I will never forget that feeling. But like when I went out there and playing it was just like, I can still do this, you know what I mean? Like this is the turning point, there's no point in trying to stop. Jason took me to Georgia Tech University in Atlanta, where he's been working with musician and inventor Gil Weinberg on several limb adaptations that push at the boundaries of music. He wanted to uh, recreate the motion of the wrist so he can hold the stick tight. But then I asked him if he's willing to play with us and do something different and more by having a second stick. And now Jason can create all kinds of polyrhythms because one of them can play and 19 hits per second, the other one can play 20 hits per second and create all kinds of sophisticated rhythms that no humans can do. And this very much bridges uh, the biological and the technological. We later figure out that with ultrasound we can actually have much more control. We can try to predict finger by finger, continuous control of each finger based on how his muscles in, in the residual limb move. So that would be my pinky. And then this would be my index, so the image looks completely different in the ultrasound. How does the ultrasound technology compare to the traditional electrode approach? With ultrasound, uh, it allows for uh, individual finger control and continuous control on top of it. What is being done at the moment to improve what you have here? All the hardware built into the arm to where it doesn't have to be connected to a computer. And everything's smaller, so we could eventually hopefully replace the more traditional used EMG technology. There's a great deal of research going on at the moment in this field, kind of where robotics and science and medicine all kind of meet. But a lot of this work is perhaps a bit more invasive, but potentially can yield even greater results. I'm not in a position to ask Jason, even though I'm sure he would say yes, to, to inject something into his body or, or to implant something into his brain. If anyone would do it, it's probably Jason, but I, I would like a, a doctor uh, do that and will be, really be excited to see what they come up with. Scientists at Duke University in North Carolina are working on such research with profound implications for the future of our species. So these are the tiny little sensors, these are wires, micro wires, 
that are implanted in the brain from where you can record the electrical signals produced by neurons. This is the electronics that I plug on top of it to basically amplify, filter and broadcast these signals. Miguel Nicolelis is a Brazilian neuroscientist who rose to prominence in 2014 when his mind-powered exoskeleton helped a paralysed man deliver the first kick of the World Cup. And we are showing to the world there is hope. Getting a paraplegic to move, here we were, using science and human, the human spirit uh, to do it. And he did. It was a humble kick. It was a tiny thing compared to what it will come in the future, of course. But the symbolism of that moment, uh, for me, I'll never forget. I mean, it was incredible. Miguel invited me into his lab, where he recreated an example of his current research for our camera. We have here a wheelchair driven by the brain of the monkey that is trying to reach the location in the room where he can collect the reward. This monkey is imagining the kind of trajectory that he has to produce to get there. How necessary is it that we do this research with animals? I introduced this concept in 1999, 2000, with two papers, one in rats and one in monkeys, uh, describing what is considered today the modern configuration of a brain-machine interface. About uh, 14 years later, we made uh, eight paraplegic patients walk again for the first time in a decade. I think the justification is pretty obvious, pretty clear. As soon as we start doing that, we realize that the brain-machine interfaces could be very useful for a new generation of prosthetic devices. Are there dangers around this technology? I'm much more concerned about we mimicking our digital machines. We probably are becoming the first species that is capable to influence its own evolution by what it produces, our technology. Because we're creating complete new constraints on how humans uh, socialize, communicate, mate. So we are actually creating a, a new pathway without even knowing. What is humanity? An increasingly complex evolutionary process guided and enabled by science and technology. What kind of arm do you think you might have in 10 years time? Unrealistically, I would, you know, like to see a hand that's kind of almost fully functional, you know, sensory feedback, hot and cold, pressure sensitive. When we invented the wheel and engineered spacecraft, we transcended our limitations. In the 21st century, we are now fast approaching the age of the cybernetically enhanced and genetically modified. This is transhumanism. There's definitely a positive. Every single bad thing or negative thing that happens, there's something good that comes out of us. You just gotta find it sometime and run with it, you know? Do you fancy a proper bionic arm? that you can feel everything just like the other hand. It has like sensory feedback. I'm not sure really, because I want to know how how you would get it and if you need to do anything else like, to your arm and stuff. Well, I suppose you'd need to have maybe even some implants in your brain and things like that. I might just stick with the sensor. Yeah, fair enough. Well, we needed to use the shopping cart, so that's why we went for oh, yeah. oh. Stop it. Looking at Angel now, could you ever have imagined that she'd be sitting here with a full bionic limb with flashing lights? We were told one day she would have every finger and, you know, it would happen. I'm very, very proud of her, like I was say. When I grow up, I want to be just like her because she was just like I asked for. She was perfect. How does that make you feel? I say it all the time when she's not around, right? That I get to talk about how much she did for me and, you know, I don't tell her enough to her face, I guess, that it matters and it's important. And I'm so happy you are my mom and that I had you cheering me on and making me feel proud of being different and not that different was bad. Around my life, I have people that say things, wow, I, I, I like your arm better than mine, or, oh, I might, I might get one of those when you start thinking if someone's voluntarily, right, replacing their limbs. Ethics, when it comes to bionics, robotics, AI, all these things are gonna be huge. I do. Do you do everything? You can even text. I can text other if I want to, yeah. Oh my I mean, 
We need to make sure that we're prepared for these kind of issues because we're not going to be ready for it and then it's going to happen and everyone's going to go, how do we handle it? How long have you even had it? Oh, hell yeah, that's awesome as hell. There's going to be restrictions eventually and they're going to say, you can't do that. Why not? You know, why can't I do the things that I want? People that have the need to make these modifications to their bodies, they can. That they have the choice.